What do you get when you strip away the obnoxious excess of an S-Class, but not the poise and the presence of a Mercedes in general? You get an E-Class, and this one in particular. Let's start the 2014 revised E550 cab and check the tech. Now the main thing I like about the E is that it's part of the new look of Mercedes cabin. This is a much flatter, sharper, a little more cornered off sort of a dash design. I'm making a point of this because this is a car that's trying to print younger, hence that more aggressive face. Now our car's got navigation, that's optional. Our car's got a backup camera, that's optional. We'll go over the pricing at the end of the piece, but not everything you see here is included, even at the fairly lofty base price. Nothing new on the nav rig, we've seen that before. It's a good system, it's not my favorite out there, but it's definitely got things going for it that make it in the top tier, if you will. Nothing surprising on the audio sources. In fact, there's actually more here than you want. You're never gonna use the SD card or the 10 gigabytes of hard drive storage. Who are they kidding? But everything you need is in here, and not all of these are based, by the way. I'm not a huge fan of the phone system for dialing simple things like going through the number and then going over to one end to pick up the call, the other end to hang up the call. It's a small thing, but you deal with it a lot. Now, under the little globe icon, you've got Mercedes-Benz apps, internet streaming radio, and your serious weather, as well as the ability down here in the corner to go to the web. All this is well and good, except it's dog slow. I actually don't have time to show you a web page on here because we don't have enough tape in our camera. Now, obviously, you're not going to browse the web while you're driving. It doesn't work when you're doing that anyway, but this is an example of how slow this car's connection and apparently uh, processing are as well. The various apps, the last time we used them, were just as slow as they seem now. Mercedes has a bad habit of sending out press cars that don't have the apps authorized, so I can't actually show you those here. What does work well on this car is an amazing rear view camera. Look at that bird's eye view with trajectory, not just for the rear haunches, but also for the outgoing front fender. And then over on the right hand side, you've got an almost mind boggling number of views from low front to God's view front to side going one way, side going the other way. Here's the overview of the rear and here's rear looking out. This is the best entertainment on TV. Now the comfort controls in this car are manifold. You've got your three level seat heater, three level seat ventilation and cooling, three level air scarf. That's this nice little heater vent right here below the headrest, very nice. And of course you got a button here that will summon the seat belt to you because it has these power retractors. There's a lot going on. Now the drive controls in this vehicle, you got this old man-ish column shifter. This tells you right here, this car does not have real sporting pretensions. You do have a sport, efficiency, and manual toggle switch here to change into your three drivetrain modes. And over here is your adaptive suspension, sport and comfort toggle. Those comprise the bulk of the drive controls with the exception of the eco button here, which isn't really a drive control, but that's where you defeat the auto start stop. We'll see if that's needed when we get on the road momentarily. Here's the problem with an E-Class, at least this convertible, is once I get the seat back in the position where I would sit, I sure can't sit behind me. In fact, no human could sit behind me. That's a very tight gap. This is definitely a larger car than a C-Class, but it's not a large car, at least not back here. Now the convertible top on this E550 ragtop is quite a thing of beauty. First of all, there's a lot to it. You've got all these layers of canvas and sound deadening, other kinds of padding and structure that make it like an inch thick. The whole thing stows from one direction to the other in about 20 seconds, kind of industry norm. And notice it doesn't necessarily go into the trunk, but into a well between the second row and the trunk. But that doesn't mean it doesn't impinge on the trunk. Now underneath this lovely clamshell opening hood, love that about a Benz, we've got a 4.6 liter bi-turbo V8. That means two turbos, one on each bank of four cylinders. The result is 402 horsepower, 443 foot-pounds of torque. Real torquey because it's a turbo. Zero to 60 is five seconds, which you might say, it's okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good indeed because this guy weighs nearly 4,400 pounds. See my earlier comment about real Mercedes. Seven-speed automatics, your only transmission choice. We're talking rear-wheel drive here. And the car gets 1726 MPG, which I suspect's a little bit optimistic. So this is not your most fuel-efficient car, but C4400 pounds and C5.0. I've got the top down now, but when this car's top is up, I really think it's as quiet as a sedan. It's pretty impressive. When you have the top down like I do, you really feel good about how they've managed the airflow over the top. It's really calm. And this air scarf dealio behind your neck, it's a great thing. 
I hate to get too excited about something silly, but it's silly and great. The power on this car is prodigious, not just how much there is, but how it really breathes well once you tap into it. And once you get into that power, whoosh, off you go. The downside is you've got turbo lag, you've got computerized throttle lag, and this seven speed is silky, not sharp. The blind spot and lane departure tech are interesting. Uh, sometimes it'll catch you drifting off the side of the road and yaw break you hard back into the lane like that. Other times though, when I'm in Distronic Cruise Control and it wants to just take me down the lane, it's so subtle it almost lets me drift out of the lane. Okay, lights turning green, lift off the throttle and get right on it. Let's see how it does. That was a quick restart. It took just that long as you could see in my pause and it also didn't rattle the whole car. But that said, I'm still not a big fan of auto start stop. Not yet, this is as good as it gets, but they still haven't got it smooth enough for me, so I disable it. What I'm also noticing in this car, as I've driven it over the last few days, is I've got some cowl shake. You can always tell because the mirror, the rear view mirror here, kind of does this. It kind of goes back and forth sideways on a chunky road. I'm surprised to see that in a car this day and age, engineered in 2014. Oh, by the way, when you come to a stop in this car, you've got the option to use the automatic parking where you have to use the brake and pedals, but it steers. That's nothing new. But they also have automatic parking spot exit technology where the car will get out of the space. I didn't know that was hard. I'm not sure it is, but I think Mercedes looked at it and said, hey, all we gotta do is reverse the software and call it a feature. So it's in there. All right, let's price this guy. Sit down. A 2014 E550 cabs, a little over 68 base. Then we start dolling it up CNET style. Premium package is almost 3,300 bucks. That's how you get a hard drive, that fantastic rear camera, and the air scarf behind your neck. 2,800 bucks gets you driver assistance, which is adaptive cruise, cross traffic, and that active blind spot and lane keeping tech. For 1,500, you can get LED headlights and smart high beams. Almost 1,300 for parking assist, which includes getting in the spot, but also getting help getting out of it. Then come services. Embrace is 280 a year for a telematics app. Another 20 bucks a month gets you concierge, speed alerts, and location-based traffic, and 14 bucks more per month if you want the apps to work. While you're at it, get the drive kit for your iPhone. 600 bucks gives you a unique iPhone-specific interface, and if you have absolutely no self-esteem, another 500 more will get you an illuminated star on the grill. All in, we're just over 78 grand for a car that really only holds two people and barely enough of their luggage to go away for the weekend. So this is really one of the nicest second cars that the well-heeled can afford. Think of it as sort of a tender to go with your S-Class yacht, but I am unmitigatedly in love with it because it has real Mercedes DNA in a package that is livable and definitely memorable.